Well, when we first started, everything was uh, really green and lush. The, the prior owners had done a great job of managing their grasses and their cattle. And uh, so it's, it was really nice and easy to, uh, to fatten up the cows, put weight on them. And uh, this year, it's, it's been a little more difficult. We had to pay more attention to the grasses and uh, how short they were. And so uh, it's just been a lot tougher and, and the cows have lost more weight during this heat and the, the drought. So that's really made it difficult. Some things that we've done different this year is that we've not, uh, we had started a more intensive grazing of the cattle on the land. And this year we've had to stop doing that make sure that they had plenty of grass uh, to eat so that they'd be able to keep on their weight and the calves would be able to increase their weight and uh, in general just be in, in, in a better state of health than if we had kept the intensively grazing where they didn't have as much grass. So we still rotate but just in bigger pastures than we, we were. Uh, our water situation has been relatively steady because we have ponds and we also have freshwater troughs, but we had one pond that's, that's gone dry, so we have to work around it. But other than that, uh, those are about the only things that we've really changed as far as the way we manage the cows. The aftermath after the drought year of 2023, uh, that's something that's starting to come up in conversation. How do we, how do we deal with it? We, we know that our pastures have been through a lot of stress. I know like in my case, it's probably 30% of my ranch where I use as a holding area where, where I place the cattle. When the grass stopped growing and the animal demand exceeded the, the amount of forage that was growing every day. And my drought plan is to take those animals and put them in a, a separate pasture and provide them with hay, uh, stored roughage and, and supplement if needed. Why the 80% of the ranch doesn't become overgrazed. So we leave it with a three to five inch uh, stubble on the desirable forages, and then we just let it sit there. And, and the idea is, is to leave enough plant material so that the roots can be deep enough to reach down and as that moisture line progresses down, as the drought goes on and on, those, those roots can grow down and keep up with the moisture line um, and keep, actually keep growing. Example, this is what was here when the cows came in. So that cow sticks her tongue out and wraps around the, the forage and then she clamps down on it and she jerks her head. So that's, that's about how much she takes in a bite is that much right there. So if you have your grass at five inches tall when you turn her in here and she takes a bite like this, how much is she gonna leave? But if you have it at 10 or 12 inches when she takes a bite and she takes that top five or six inches off, how much is she gonna leave? And that's what we want. We wanna see that two, three, four, five inches. So you as the manager, you do have control over that. Now, if they stay in here a little bit longer to where they've made one bite across the whole place, they're still gonna be hungry that next day after they take that one bite across the place. So they're gonna come back into the spot that's like this, this three or four inches. Hey, Jennifer, where she uh, is, 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 uh, is going to be a key. You know, three years ago, a lot of our producers just laughed at that and said, oh, well, because their input costs were relatively low. They had plenty of grazing. They had plenty of, uh, of, of hay available and feedstuffs available. But in the last two years, and maybe two and a half years, uh, prices for all of those kinds of materials have escalated dramatically. And so their input cost has, uh, has, has really, in many cases, forced these people to look at this regenerative agriculture, which I think is a good thing. I think that the more we get into that, 
And the more we use that rotational grazing and different grasses and cover crops, all of those things are gonna benefit the cow-calf industry here in Louisiana in the future. You already grazed it once, and if you leave her in there too long because of your management, she's gonna take another bite off of it. And now it's gonna be down to an inch. So the time she spends in there and the amount of forage on offer has a lot to do with the residue that's left in your pasture. So one of the things that I've noticed uh, over the years of, of farming this property and managing this property is when I was a young guy, my, my dad, the way that he managed the property was he would come in with a bush hog and, and cut it to about two inches and it looked great and it was real smooth and he knocked down all the anthills and killed all the briars that were trying to come up, but it wasn't really productive for the, for the grazing. It, it, you know, although it looked good, it's really not the best practice. And, and we've learned that over the years. Alan and I have talked about these things. Those are not the things that we want to do going forward. We want to do things that are going to be good for the soil, good for the grasses, and good for ultimately for the cattle. What we want is the best for this soil, the best for these grasses, and the best ultimately for our cattle and our operation. So we're going to do anything that we can do, working together with the best science available, to try to bring those things forward that make us better and make this ground better. This is the only ground we got. We're going to take good care of it. And if you notice the difference in my farm and a, and a typical cattle farm, the 20 years I've been doing this, we have not tilled the soil, we have not planted any seeds. We have just tried to heal the land by rotational grazing, multi-species grazing, and allowing the manures to go to work and the seeds that were already here to come back up. And that's how we've healed our soil. If you had let your cows be overstocked and overgrazed and, and they overgrazed this pasture, what would have happened to your to your grasses and what could have happened to your soil biome? Well, at bare ground, I think you lose a whole lot. You lose a lot more moisture to evaporation. And I think if I would allow that to happen, and ha allow them to overgraze by leaving them here too long or put, having too many cows for the amount of acreage that I have, there's a formula that we go by for grazing. We would do 40,000 pounds of cows per acre per day in day one, and then in day two, we'll put them in this next section, we'll do 40,000 pounds of cows per acre per day and you manage to get everything eaten on your farm. And that's what you want to do. You want to get everything mowed, mobbed, and moving. That's the third one, mowed. So you want them to mow, and they're going to take a layer off right here. Okay, day one, they're here. Day two, they're in the next paddock. Day three, they're in the next paddock. On day four, when you move to that paddock, you drive in the egg mobile into paddock number one. And the reason for that is, um, on day one, when the cows are in paddock number one, they drop all their manure, and the flies come and lay all their eggs in that manure. On day five, the flies hatch out of that manure. But on day three, when I drive the eggmobile in, that larva is the biggest, fattest, highest protein it's gonna be. So my chickens get a tremendous protein source. They scatter my manure for me. They eat the intestinal larva from the worms from the cows. They eat the fly larva. And they poop, and um, that's why the, we don't have to plant, why we don't have to fertilize. And as a result of this, I don't have a program for worming my cows, and I don't have a program for spraying my cows, because um, we just kind of let everything balance itself in nature. Whenever you had the drought last summer, we had a drought, how tall was this grass? And why? Why was it that tall? Because they were, they were perennial plants with deep root systems that went down two and three and four feet depending on the plant. You want to be closer to the water table and you want all your plants to be connected to Mother Earth. One of the reasons we don't till. When you don't do that, you, your water stays in your soil more. When you till and till and till and just add NPK, your soil compacts and the rain just hits it and runs off and the rain doesn't go down into your soil. But if you have plants like this, the, the rain hits the plants, comes down, goes into the soil. The plants shade where the sun doesn't make it evaporate as fast. So you have better soil because you have plants and root systems that you haven't destroyed by tilling. And then everything works out for the best. I think it's critical that we always keep our soil covered where the sun can't hit your dirt. And we do this by diversity of plants. And again, I'm gonna go back to um, 
perennials. Perennials have root systems as much as three and four feet. So when you do have this drought that's necessary, that's gonna come everywhere no matter where you are, and you have annuals that are just two inches deep, they're gonna die because the water table is not gonna supply. But if you have perennials, like a lot of, a lot of this stuff is, with three and four foot root systems, the drought's not gonna affect you nearly as much. Come on. So currently on, on my personal property and, and what I'm personally doing, um, I'm, I'm doing a managed grazing system, a rotational grazing system. A lot of the people that work with GLCI, Louisiana GLCI, uh, they do have an interest in a regenerative grazing system. Um, the, the basic premises behind a regenerative grazing system is to kind of mimic nature and, and how those impacts from the herbivore have on the plants and the soil. Um, most of the time a regenerative grazing system is going to minimize the amount of commercial inputs that are that are in place whether it be herbicide or fertilizers um, and and those kind of systems are, are pretty unique in the, in the fact that uh, mimicking nature allows those plants rest right so so a regenerative grazing system will have components of a rest-based rotation system and and allowing those plants to rest and recover even in times like we're facing here with drought, it, it creates a healthier plant, which in turn creates a healthier animal. Um, when, when those animals can get a bite of nutritious forage that has rested and has recovered and has put back the nutrients back into its leaves, um, that animal is getting a healthier bite and in turn will create a healthier animal and, and a healthier offspring. Uh, the producers that have used our assistance uh, and adopted a, a grazing system uh, through us uh, have seen some benefits uh, when it comes to this drought. I mean, we all started out as conventional farmers and ranchers. And just uh, in recent years have we learned, have I learned more about the, the rotational grazing and grass management for the health of the animals. Uh, we talk to people who quiz us about what we're doing and how we're doing it. Uh, you really got to be committed to it and it may take a while for it to be successful for you but you gotta be committed to, to the process. We're just always, we're budget oriented because we are trying to make a living at this. And that's what's really different than a lot of producers is this is our livelihood. So we're trying to, we always make a budget for our planting. We know exactly how much it's gonna cost us. We haven't seen anything suffering here at all. And we got NRCS equipped to start this year. So we're about to put in a well and water troughs and get that place set up a lot more like this, which I hope to tell a before and after story in about seven years and see how far that's come because it really is and it's been terribly managed for as long as this has been really well managed. So every day almost or every week we can see a contrast in production. It's really eye-opening to see that. If you look into the future of what's going to be there for the next generation of farmers, I think you really, really got to consider the uh, rotational grazing as far as the cattle program and regenerative farming because I think that's going to help us to uh, sustain our, uh, our crops, going to help us sustain our cattle industry because if we don't take care of the land and keep the land uh, fed essentially, then we're going to lose it.